Mackenzie Wark teaches media and cultural studies at the New School University in New York and is the author of several books, including A Hacker Manifesto. Ken's new book, Gamer Theory, will be published by Harvard University Press in spring 2007, but in the meantime, the Institute for the Future of the Book worked with Ken to present Gamer Theory as a networked book on their website. By visiting futurethebook.org slash gamer theory, you can read Ken's book in progress online and take part in the discussions with the author and with other readers. Hello, Ken. It's nice to have you on This Spartan Life. It's a pleasure to be here. You've already met our camera people, Sherry and Peaches. It strikes me as maybe kind of a brave thing to do, to put your book online before it's been published in print and open up the whole process to criticism and comment. How has that whole experience been for you as an author? Uh, it was interesting. I mean, I, I thought it would be uh, kind of scary. You know, it's uh, it's like having people shooting at you. You know, you put your uh, text up there before you're even really done with it, and then people post comments. But I think uh, the way it ended up was that uh, people treated it with a really good spirit, and uh, most of the comments were, in fact, really useful. Yeah, it's helpful as a reader, too, to have the comments right there as you're reading the book. It sort of brings out what... Uh, writing always is anyway, which is that, in a sense, you're always the DJ of other people's uh, thoughts and ideas. And this just sort of makes that manifest. It makes it a bit more obvious that what other people read and then feed back to you is part of the process. So let's take a walk. Now, in books and movies, there's usually a narrative, which moves in a linear fashion, normally. And in games, you and others have argued that that has been replaced by the algorithm of the game or the coded rules and physics but in gamer theory, you talk about algorithm. Well, allegory is a really ancient figure, and it's a way of seeing how a text, or any work of art really, gives you a sense of what the totality of the world is that you're living in. Some people say that we're now living in uh, a world that is uh, algorithmic, you know, from uh, algorithm, which is, you know, if you like, a process with a start and end that performs some function. So, following Lev Manovich and uh, Alex Galloway, some of us talk about algorithmic culture. And so if you put allegory and algorithm together, uh, you've got algorithm, which is that uh, maybe the, what's important about things like computer games is the way algorithms start to run the world. So what we have here is a little world where, you know, nine times out of ten, the algorithm runs pretty smoothly, pretty perfectly. And that's like a model of a world that never quite runs that way, but does seem to run algorithmically, where, if you like, everything is a program to make it all mesh together. I really like the way you talk about the difference between the topical world, the topographic world, and the coming topological world. And I was reminded of the way our world here in this game is the product of data that's constantly being sent in packets from console to console, and how little flaws in that process can expose the entire apparatus. So what should we know about the topological world? It's a way of kind of imagining that uh, spaces get woven together ever more tightly by more and more lines of transport and communication. And so I use these three terms, uh, the, the topic or the topical, the idea of an ancient world, uh, where everything is like little spaces that are very, very uh, imperfectly and tenuously connected together. And then the topographic is, if you like, the early modern world where uh, railway and telegraph start to sort of thread it together, but really it's, it's really not quite there. But to give us then a sense of a third stage of where we're heading, which is uh, what I call topology or the topological, a sense in which every place and everything is connectable to everything else. Uh, so you could transform any part of the world into any other part of the world, if you like. Transport and communication. Yeah. And I'm interested in the way that uh, certain kind of games model what that might be like to live in this uh, topological world where you, know, you can uh, leap from one space to the other, as for example you can in this game, pick up objects, transform objects. You know, how do we start to then think through our culture about what it means to be in that kind of topological space? When our very presence is abstracted, as it is in online gaming, it does seem like we're being prepared for a new kind of world. I mean, in some sense, we just moved from one place to another. Yeah, I like the way Teleporter is uh, sort of like an image of uh, what topological space is kind of like. I mean, for example, I could design something on my laptop and just send the specs off to a factory and they'll mail it back to me. 
you know, there's a sense in which these things don't have to be together in space. You can bend one point in space to connect another. And the thing about a game like this is it gives you a sense of what it's like to live in a space like that. President Eisenhower famously warned about the power of the military-industrial complex and the permanent war economy. You and other theorists talk about the military entertainment complex. Now, most people know that the military was very important in the genesis of the game industry, but you say there is also a, quote, subtle corrosive imposition of the digital game space on every aspect of life. Yeah, I don't know who coined uh, the military entertainment complex, but there's a sense uh, in which everything around us seems game-like these days. And it's not just that the technologies are all kind of connected and, and came from the same place. Uh, it's really that it's, it's kind of uh, affecting the culture, that the culture is all becoming one thing. All aspects of life end up becoming under the influence of a sort of universal and ubiquitous computing to be game-like. And we get this sense of uh, everything becoming a game. Right, we call this Spartan life a talk show in game space. And I've always used that phrase to mean the space in which you play a game, or in our case, don't play it. But you use the term game space to describe the real world, which has become more like a game. Well, it's a sense that uh, work is a rat race, uh, that politics is a horse race, that the economy is a casino. So, you know, there's a kind of sense of uh, everything being a game, but those games never really having clear rules. The odds definitely seem stacked, you know, to the kind of Enrons of the world rather than to the uh, average ordinary person. So I, I see all of that as, if you like, military entertainment complex, uh, producing a game space. Uh, but compared to that, Actual computer games seem, you know, really a kind of blessed kind of world. At least you sort of know where you stand. And that, to me, is uh, one of the reasons that they might be so popular. So you chose a handful of games to talk about in Gamer Theory. What attracted you to the individual games? All the games that I write about in uh, Gamer Theory are kind of the, the single-player experience. Uh, so I write about Rez because I just think that's a really, really beautiful game. And there, my interest was targeting. is this idea of uh, what is it in the experience of sort of targeting something and shooting at it that seems so kind of satisfying. Uh, and it's a way of, of sort of solving the problem of the anxiety about being, you know. When you lock onto the target, you're sort of at one with it. Uh, but then as soon as you've hit it, you're sort of forced back into a subjectivity that is entirely your own. Uh, so that, to me, struck me as what you can say about the act of targeting, which is common to very many games. Right at the start of your book, you talk about what you call the cave, which sounds a lot like a video game arcade, but you're taking a metaphor from Plato, and I'm wondering what was it about Plato's metaphor that made you want to update it for the age of video games? Well, I mean, it's the, the sort of the root of any kind of uh, theoretical thinking, that there's something about this world that's deceiving us, you know, that there's a light, uh, the light of reason or thought that'll help us, but in uh, Plato's metaphor of the cave, it's coming from outside. Uh, so we're all, if you like, strapped in the cave, uh, and we think these shadows are kind of real when they're really just the shadow of something somewhere else. But maybe there's more to learn staying inside the cave than trying to get out of it. So I want to sort of turn the metaphor around. And one of the things Plato says happens inside the cave is that, if you like, people compete for prizes. That's the thing that keeps us in this cave that, for him, is, is what sort of misleading us about what the world is like. What if the thing to do is not to try to get out of the cave, but stay in it, to try to explore this world, this game world that we're in, and try to see how that might be more true to the world outside of it than anything else? Because if the world outside is becoming more and more game-like, then this is, in fact, the most real thing there is. Because it's the almost perfect form of what it would be like to live in a world that's been turned into one enormous game space. I don't know if you noticed, but this entire map is pretty much one big cave. Well, I've got a ray of light that I'm looking straight at, actually. It's really kind of pretty over there. Oh, I can see sky! Yeah, that, that might be our way out. But I, I got bad news for you. I mean, I've tried for hours to get out that hole. <laughs> so did you get there? Well, if you look at where I'm shooting... We got up to that ledge right there, and that was it. I know there's something out there, you know, big, flat, untextured space. But I have a thing for big, flat, untextured spaces. You see, it's not really outside. It's inside the game. Yeah, it's not outside the game, but it's calling me. So if we walk over to the other side, maybe you would like to read a section from your book for the gamers who've joined us. These guys are setting up a sort of pedestal here for Peaches to jump on to get a nice shot of you up on that balcony. Sort of a makeshift crane shot. But this particular topology still demands that we get the big machines to do the heavy lifting. 
Thanks, guys. That's probably pretty good. Peaches? Ken, you know where to go? Yep. Okay. Is everybody ready? Settle down. Camera rolling. The Institute for the Future of the Book and This Spartan Life are proud to present Mackenzie Wark reading from his book Gamer Theory. Take it away, Ken. Thank you, Damien. Ever get the feeling you're playing in some vast and useless game to which you don't know the goal and can't remember the rules? Ever get the fierce desire to quit, to resign, to forfeit, only to discover there's no umpire, no referee, no regulator to whom to announce your capitulation? Ever get the vague dread that while you have no choice but to play the game, you can't win it, can't even know the score, or even who keeps it? Ever suspect that you don't know who your real opponent might be? Ever get mad over the obvious fact that the dice are loaded, the decks stacked, the table rigged, and the fix in? Welcome to Game Space. It's everywhere, this atopian arena, this speculation sport. No pain, no gain, no guts, no glory. Give it your best shot. There's no second place, winner take all. Well, here's a heads up. In Game Space, even if you know the deal, are a player, have got game, you will notice all the same that the game has got you. Welcome to the Thunderdome. Welcome to the Terror Dome. Welcome to the greatest game of all. Welcome to the playoffs, the big league, the masters, the only game in town. You are a gamer, whether you like it or not. And now we all live in a game space that is everywhere and nowhere. As Microsoft says, where do you want to go today? You can go anywhere you want in game space, but you can never leave it. Ow! <laughs>